This is the HMS Queen Elizabeth, the UK's most advanced carrier. She's the lead ship of her class, and honestly, she's a beast, the largest warship ever built for the UK's Royal Navy. So, why did the Royal Navy skip the nuclear reactors for their big flagship? Well, it mostly came down to the eye-watering through-life costs. Building and looking after a nuclear ship is incredibly expensive from day one, and it stays that way through years of high-tech maintenance and eventual decommissioning. Since the UK doesn't have a whole fleet of nuclear surface ships, building all that extra infrastructure just for two carriers was a bit too much for the budget. Some experts even say a nuclear reactor can hike up the ship's total lifetime cost by nearly 280%. The Ministry of Defense decided that just wasn't the way to go. Then there's the logistical side of things. Sure, a nuclear carrier can stay at sea forever without needing more fuel for the ship itself, but it still needs tankers for all the other essentials like jet fuel, ammo, and food for the crew. Since the planes go through fuel so fast, the carrier strike group always has supply ships tagging along anyway. Because those tankers are already right there to support the escort ships and the aircraft, the infinite range of a nuclear hull doesn't actually add that much value. The carrier can just top up its diesel whenever the rest of the group refuels. <music> Lastly, it's all about the planes. Unlike the massive U.S. Navy supercarriers that need steam or magnets to launch their jets, the Queen Elizabeth class uses a ski jump for its F-35s. Since these aircraft are designed for short takeoffs and vertical landings, they don't need a giant burst of energy from a nuclear reactor to get into the air. The ship's current setup, using two Rolls-Royce MT-30 gas turbines and four diesel generators, provides plenty of power for everything it needs to do, all while keeping the crew a bit smaller and more efficient. It's a smart, practical fit for the job.